Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? So today we're going to be talking about multi-class classification techniques. So to be really clear here, a lot of the time when we study data science, we talk about classification problems and regression problems. And so today we'll just be focusing on the classification problems. But when you're first learning data science or even well after that, people usually focus on these things called binary classification problems. Is the outcome this or this? So there's kind of just two outcomes. Sometimes it's like a yes or a no, or gets accepted or gets rejected. And that gets a lot of focus. But of course, in the real world, there's a lot of very interesting problems which require multi-class classification, which means that there could be three or maybe even potentially many more possible outcomes for any given input. And so today, we'll be talking about multi-class classification from kind of a broad perspective. So we're not going to be diving deep into any one technique. We'll be instead looking at it from three different viewpoints. So first we'll be looking at models which can be very nicely, naturally extended to the multi-class case without really any extra work on our part. Then we'll be looking at models that can be extended. Specifically, we'll be looking at logistic regression. So that can be extended to the multi-class case, but does take a little bit more thinking, but we can get there. And then finally, we'll be talking about a two sets of techniques here, which can be used to extend literally any binary classification model you can build to the multi-class case. So right now it sounds like that's going to be the best. Why would we even bother doing this if this is a universal technique? But we'll look at what are the huge disadvantages of the universal technique. And it kind of stems from the fact that they're so general that they are not too powerful for every method. We'll get there at the end, okay? Let's first just start off real simple by talking about two of our most favorite binary classification techniques and see how they naturally extend to the multi-class case. So in this video, we'll just be kind of keeping it real abstract. We'll have triangles, circles, and squares. So we have three classes we want to predict. First, let's talk about k-nearest neighbor. K-nearest neighbor really works out in the multi-class case really well. For example, here's an easy picture. Let's say the mystery data point we're trying to predict is here at the question mark with the dotted oval around it. And we're going to use k equals 6. So the question now is, of my six closest neighbors, what is the majority class? So we look at the six closest neighbors, it's going to be three circles, this guy, this guy, and this guy. It's going to be two triangles, this guy and this guy, and it's going to be one square, this guy. So looking at this very simple tabulation, we would see that the majority of my six neighbors are circles, and I'm going to predict myself to be a circle as well. And we can even go one step further and assign some probabilities. For example, what's the probability of being a circle? That would be three divided by six neighbors, or 50%. What's the probability of being a triangle? That would be 2 divided by 6 neighbors, or 33%. And what's the probability of being a square? So that would be 1 divided by 6 neighbors, or roughly 17%. Okay, so pretty simple extension. Let's look at another extension here, decision trees. Decision trees are one of our friends because they lead to very powerful techniques like boosting, bagging, random forests, extra trees, all these family of tree-based models. So if we can find a way to make decision trees into multi-class, we can also do it for all those other models going forward. And it turns out it's not too tough, just because of the intuitive way decision trees are structured. Remember that decision trees just go on asking a series of questions, and we work down the tree until we arrive at an outcome. So all we really have to do is just put the right outcome at the right leaf. For example, if we start at the root node, and we follow this branch down, then we follow this branch down, suppose that would be a triangle. So we predict that to be a triangle. Instead, if we follow this branch down, if we follow this branch down, and this branch down, that would be a circle. So we see that decision trees also really naturally extend into multi-class. Now let's talk about a model that is a little bit more difficult to extend into multi-class, takes a little bit more thinking, but is still a model that we really care about extending to multi-class, which is logistic regression. So remember, logistic regression might have been even the first model you ever learned for classification, and it is very important because it's kind of the foundation building block for these complicated neural network architectures we have nowadays. So the question is, how do I extend a binary logistic regression to multi-class? It seems tough because the very way that we formulated logistic regression seems like it could only work for binary problems. But if we just make a small tweak, we'll see that it works real well for multi-class problems as well. And the key is that we first pick a class pretty much arbitrarily as our pivot. So we're going to pick the circle class as our pivot. So what we do now is that if we have k classes total, we're going to build k minus 1 logistic regression. So in our case, we have three classes total. We've picked one class as our pivot. 
So we're going to build two logistic regressions. The first one is going to be a logistic regression on triangles versus circles. So what we do is we compute the logit function or the log of the odds ratio between the probability of something being a triangle divided by the probability of that thing being a circle. So remember this is very similar to the form of logistic regression you're probably familiar with. And we just say that's equal to beta triangle transpose x. So beta triangle is just some vector of coefficients and x is the observation that we care about classifying. So what we're saying first is that we're going to model the log of the odds of the probability of being a triangle divided by a circle. So this is the odds ratio taking the log of it. That's going to be given by a linear combination of all the data we have about that observation. And similarly, we build a logistic regression for the class of squares versus circles. So now we have these two logistic regressions, one for triangles versus circles, one for squares versus circles. How do we turn those into probabilities of any given observation being in any of the three classes while making sure that the sum of those three probabilities is equal to one? That's a constraint that we have to satisfy. It's pretty easy. Let's just solve this equation here for probability of triangle. That would just involve exponentiating both sides, moving this over to the right hand side, and we find that probability of triangle is given by e to the beta triangle transpose x times probability of circle. Again, that's just me solving this equation. I can solve the following equation in the exact same way and I get the probability of square is equal to e to the beta square transpose x probability of circle. And we know that these three things, the three being probability of triangle, probability of square, probability of circle, need to add up to one because it has to be in one of these classes. And so I just take this guy, add it to this guy, and add it to probability of circle. So this plus this plus probability of circle needs to add up to one. And if you write it in that form, you'll notice the only unknown is probability of circle. And so we can solve for probability of circle and it looks like this. Very natural form, very similar looking to the probability as you see in a binary logistic regression. So this is equal to one divided by one plus e to the beta triangle transpose x plus e to the beta square transpose x. And how would I get the probabilities that a class is equal to triangle or square? Remember, that is just equal to this times the respective e to the beta x. And so just for example, if I'm trying to get the probability that something is a class square, then I would do e to the beta square transpose x as my numerator here instead of 1. So we saw that it did take a little bit more work. We had to be clever and think about, oh, okay, actually I need to build several different logistic regressions, pick a pivot, and it took a little bit of work, but we can still get a very nice, very similar looking form to our binary logistic regression. So it's still totally possible. And to close this video out, we will look at universal solutions to this multi-class classification. And what I mean by universal is that if you have built any binary classification model, whether it's a logistic regression or a decision tree or support vector machines or something more complicated, you can use either of these techniques to try to turn that into a multi-class classification. But we'll see the big drawbacks that you have to pay and why it might be better to try to turn your problem into a multi-class classification by looking at the actual mathematics under the hood instead of just blindly applying these techniques. But let's take a look at them. The first one is called one versus all. So you know you have k classes, here we have three. And so you're going to build k different binary classifications using your model where each one is pitting a given class versus all of the others. So specifically, the first thing we do is take our data and we keep all the things that are labeled circles as circles. And then everything that's labeled square or triangle, we just put into its own class, just lump those together into some second class. And so that becomes this class of squares and triangles. And then we run a binary classification using whatever model you want on circles versus rest. So that's one versus all. And then the next thing we do, as you probably saw coming, now we treat the squares as their own class and lump the circles and triangles together into one class, build another binary classification, and finally we treat the triangles as their own class and lump the circles and the squares together into their own class. Seems like a very cool, very natural thing to do, but let's look at a good example of when this works and when this might fail. So let's say we build these three models and then we take a new observation x and we feed it into each of these models. Let's say the first model predicts that that thing is a circle. 
let's say the second model predicts it's in this joint circle triangle class, and let's say the third model predicts it's in this joint circle square class. This data, these results are all very consistent. You would predict circle in this case, because this is saying it's a circle, this is saying it's either a circle or triangle, and finally it says it's either a circle or square. So you would predict circle, no problem. But as you might have seen coming, this runs into problems when each one predicts a different class, and then it's kind of like, I don't know what to do about that. So that's one of the big weaknesses of one versus all. And where might this come from? Where might this weakness come from? This weakness kind of stems from the fact that when we build each of these binary classifications, we're lumping together observations who truly belong to two different classes into just one big lump class. And that might cause some fighting between the data signatures of, for example, squares and triangles, which might lead to kind of weak models across the board. So this is something that people could use, that do use sometimes, but it's not as strong as taking the specific problem you have and building a multi-class version of it. And the other way, the other universal extension is called one versus one. So this is kind of a natural follow-up. This says that we're going to build a model for circle versus square. We're gonna build another model for triangle versus circle, and we're gonna build a third model for triangle versus square. And then similarly, we're gonna use these models to predict some unknown quantity. So we're gonna put in x1. Let's say we get circle, circle, and triangle predicted. And then we just go with the majority class. So in this case, we would go with circle, since two of the models say it's gonna be a circle, and we're done. Now, we get the same exact problem. This doesn't in any way fix the problem of one versus all. For example, you could imagine that we have three models, and the first one gives a prediction of circle, the second one triangle, and the third one square. Again, we don't know what to do in that case. We're kind of stuck. And the reason that this could happen, notice that when we built these three models in either of these cases, the three models weren't talking to each other. They didn't know anything about each other. So there's no reason that their predictions should line up in the way we want them to. In fact, many times they're not gonna line up and you get into these really terrible issues. So I would say that these techniques are very much not preferred if you are able to take your specific model that you've built and construct some kind of multi-class version of it, like we did for logistic regression. So this was, again, just kind of a survey video. We didn't cover every binary classification technique, obviously, in this video, but just kind of showing you that some techniques naturally extend, some techniques take a little bit of work, but do extend, and there are also options that are available to do universal extensions to any binary classification technique, but there are many weaknesses. Oh, last thing I'll say, for one versus one, how many models do you have to build? So we have to build k choose two, right? Because if we have k classes, we need to build a model pitting each one against each other one. And so that's gonna be k choose two. Now, since we only had three classes here, it didn't seem like a big deal, but k choose two scales quadratically, which means that if you double the number of classes you have, you're going to have to build four times as many models. So this becomes very impractical if you have a very large number of classes that you could potentially assign things to. So it's not really preferred in any sense. Okay, so this was just multi-class classification overview. If you have any questions at all, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you next time.